That's it, Jerry. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call this special meeting of the Quorum Court to order. The prayer and the pledge tonight is going to be taken care of by J.P. Tom Lundstrom. Mr. Lundstrom. Precious Heavenly Father, we're always thankful for your mercy and your grace as we gather here tonight to uh, do the county's business. We ask that you would superintend in this meeting, guide us and direct us, and lend us uh, your wisdom. We ask that you would uh, be with all those that are in uniform serving this county and this country. We ask it tonight in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, J.P. Lundstrom. Karen, would you call the roll, please? Daniel Balls. Here. Harvey Bowman. Here. Rick Cochran. Here. Robert Dennis. Here. Lisa Ecke. Here. Ann Harbison. Here. Sharon Lloyd. Sharon Lloyd's going to be here in a minute, but she's just running late. Tom Lundstrom. Here. Eva Madison. Sue Madison. Here. Joel Maxwell. Joe Patterson. Here. Butch Pond. Here. Bill Essery. Here. Quorum present. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Judge. Eva is at a new kindergarten parent teacher meeting tonight <laughs> okay. so she's either not here or very late okay thank you the next thing we have is the adoption of the agenda do I have a motion to adopt the agenda I do I have a motion in a second all in favor say aye, aye. oppose same sign okay the next thing we're gonna have, call on Bobby Hill treasurer's report Bobby if you'll come forward please <clears throat> Hello, everybody. First off, Karen twisted my arm and said I had to have the revenues for the September 10th meeting. So I will have the preliminaries. Uh, just a few notes on that. There won't be a so-called magic bullet to solve all the county's problems in the projections, but there is some optimism out there. The, there will be growth in the property taxes, maybe three to 400000 in general, in general alone, increase, and I also think that the sales tax will continue to grow as well. That's more iffy because everybody knows that something in the Middle East happens and gas goes to four dollars, and then all bets are off on that. So, <clears throat> and will it be enough to balance the revenues and expenditures? No, I don't think so. But as my mom used to say, every little bit helps. So, anyway, five point one. First off, the general fund began fourteen million eighty-six thousand, ended thirteen million two sixty-one, which again is not that uncommon for this time of year during the summer months for expenditures to be over revenues. Uh, mm -hmm. Road continues to do well. They they ended the month with one point eight million in the bank, and likewise, jail is also doing well. They ended at seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand to end July. And this time of year, we should have, uh, as far as new revenue, 58% in at the end of July. And general is just over 60%. Road is at 59 and jail is at 68%. <coughs> so the revenues are coming in at projections or above. The main reason for the jail is the state has, in July, they brought in 300000 for us and earlier in August, another 300,000. So they're almost at their projection for the year already. So we're hoping that's gonna continue. <clears throat> anyway, let's see, 5.2, the one cent sales tax. Another good month for the sales tax. We brought in 562,000, which J.P. Harbison will be glad to know that we did finally surpass the numbers from 2010 that was the that was the old census we finally caught up five years in <clears throat> uh, 
And we have seen a, from this one cent tax, we've seen an increase in 15 in the last 16 months. Yes. 5.3 quarter cent jail tax. It has increased over July of 2014. It's uh, for the year we're 370,000 over from this same time last year. And we're at 7.23% increase. And we projected 1.5, so we're well over that. Okay, <coughs> finally, the road tax. Uh, it came in 109,000, which was virtually the same as last year. For the year, there, the road tax is up 4.3%. And 5.5, they wanted me to include this. I don't know a lot about it other than the revenue coming into it. I probably wouldn't be as colorful as Nelson trying to present it. But uh, we ended the month at $1.2 million in our insurance fund. August 3rd, we did do the $500,000 transfer. So that total doesn't reflect that. But we're currently at $1.6 million in our insurance fund. And I can take any questions y'all might have. Chickpea Ecke. Thank you for your report. Mr. Hill, would you do me a favor so I don't have to bring a magnifying glass? Can you make this bigger in your font size? I cannot read these numbers. I can't read it off that scanner either. But yes, I will would try you? to I appreciate improve it. that next time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Judge. P. Cochran. Yes. Uh, did uh, Nelson Driver give us any, any indication of an additional influx. I know that we have to be at 1.8 million in, I believe, August. He did not. I haven't talked to him okay. since he had his. Yeah, since he had his illness. illness. Uh, so with us having a 60, dollars drain here and being at 1.6 million or thereabouts, uh, I believe we need to be at 1.8. If my memory serves me correct. I believe that's correct. Could, could you, when it? When is that? I believe it's August. Uh, maybe it's September. Do we know? Do we know a date? Karen? I don't know. I've spoken with, with um, Nelson, and we, the money's been transferred into the fund, so I believe he's good with it. I don't know what the balance is. I know the transfer, we didn't have a court order transferring the money until right. after the first of the month. Right. So it may not, I don't know if it's referenced in that. It's, it's not on this report, but right. August 3rd, we did a $500,000 transfer. Right. But right. we're still below the one point eight. Right, that's that's my concern because that's that's uh, something that affects our rates that we pay uh, on our side of the fence. He didn't seem concerned, okay. but I will reach out to him and ask to be sure he's aware and okay. on target. Thank you. Just so everyone will know, uh, I did ask Nelson to give us this uh, sheet each month. I told him that it wasn't necessary necessarily to come in unless he had some good or bad news, but this shows the income. Uh, on 5.5, it shows the income for uh, the revenues of the fund and the expenses for claims that are paid out. Of course, they you know they could have a big claim or a little claim, and you can see we had a $62,000 drain on the uh, net balance in this month of July. So that's what this that's what this report 5.5 is for, and we'll we'll continue getting those from Nelson. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. I appreciate you requesting that report. I think it'll be informative to all of us. Thank you, J.P. Cochran. No other questions? Thank you, Bobby. <clears throat> Comptroller's report. Cheryl. Thank you, Judge. Um, 6.1 is the unappropriated reserves. Um, the changes this this time for um, County General was the 508,386 that we did with the ordinances that was passed last month. I don't have that list with me, but I can get it to Karen. She can send it to you. But if you look back at your um, packet from last month, it will you will see all those and and see what those were different amounts were for. Um, on 6.2, that report, as you know, has does not show the encumbrances. So it's showing the different funds. You can see County General is at 57% 50, expended for the year. If you go over to 6.3, where general funds broken down by department, and you see that total, it's showing 64%. That's because encumbrances are included 
in, in the 6.3 report. So that's showing your total liability, what we have paid and what we know we will be paying. Any questions for Cheryl? J.P. Madison. Thank you, Madam Judge. This is really not on what you've presented tonight. But last night when the animal shelter was being discussed and the issue came up about donations to the animal shelter flowing into general and there was some expression by J.P.'s that that money should automatically somehow go back to the animal shelter mm -hmm. since people had donated it for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And when was it appropriated? And you said, well, it's already done sort of. And I didn't understand the sort of. What, what, what happens to that money specifically? Well, part of it's, part of it's already been um, projected in the revenue projections. But like I told, said last month when we discussed it, that every, quarterly, that will be part of the quarterly ordinances that we present. Um, it's one of those things that you don't want to predict donations. You want to do them after they come in, obviously, for obvious reasons. And we have some other funds that we do that with um, where we're not sure how much money is going to come in, like the drug enforcement funds that we do, the, um, some of the other funds that we do quarterly. That would be part of the quarterly ordinances. Is it, is it shown as donations for the animal shelter, yes. or is it just everything's in one big amount? It's, it's a separate line item. It is a separate mm -hmm. line item. Yes. Then we do it. There's no sort of about it. It's done. Well, the part of the part of the revenue projections has already been included. It was included in the original budget under the revenue projections, but they have not been appropriated separately. But that will be part of the quarterly ordinance. If you if so, you we do project donations. We will be yes, yes. Okay, we project donations. We receive donations, and on a quarterly basis, they're reappropriated back to the entity to which they were donated. In the future, they'll all be recognized. They won't be projected. This year, there was 4,000 that was projected okay, during so, the original. So we're going to stop projecting? Yes. And why are we changing that? Because you do not want to put donations in your budget until you actually receive them, because there's no guarantee you're going to get a donation. Right. I would be surprised that we had done it any differently, but I'm glad we're cleaning that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, J.P. Madison. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next thing we have is number seven, and that's Mr. Bill Ussery. If you want to come on up. And, and this is a, uh, an ordinance. Uh, American Tube is uh, adding on to their plant. And they're going to add a significant number of jobs. And so, if you, would you mind go ahead and Hi, good Lance. evening? <laughs> Hi, how are you, Judge? I'm Lance Eads with the Springdale Chamber of Commerce. Um, American Tubing, uh, just in the last couple of years, went through an expansion. We've come uh, coming back now because they're already out of room again, and they're going to be building a new building. Um, it's about an $8 million project, adding a, a hundred additional jobs, and they're in the, between the $14 and $15 an hour jobs, so they're very well paying positions. Um, so this is a great opportunity for us to be able to continue to build our manufacturing base in Springdale, and, and they'd like to participate in the, the tax back incentive program through the state um, as part of building this new this new structure. So we need to get approval from the quorum court for that. So I'd like to go ahead and move that we uh, adopt 7.1 and that we pass it on to the quorum court. I have a motion and a second. Judge, uh, we, may I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Um, this is, I know we're kind of in a brave new world, uh, but this is a quorum court meeting. Y'all can't act officially tonight without referring it on to a meeting. Um, in fact, I would say that you're kind of obligated to do that unless you table something tonight to, to a certain date later. So I would suggest you let me read it, then uh, move to pass it, and then take whatever action you deem appropriate on it. Is that? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. A resolution endorsing participation of American Tubing Incorporated in the Sales and Use Tax Refund Program authorized by the Consolidated Incentive Act of 2003 and Arkansas Code Annotated Section 15-4-2706-D. 
Whereas, in order for a business to be eligible for participation in the investment tax incentives provided in the Consolidated Incentive Act of 2003 and Arkansas Code Annotated Section 15-4-2706D, the local governing body must specify that the Department of Finance and Administration is authorized to refund local sales and use taxes to a business participating in the tax refund program and, whereas American Tubing Incorporated of 2191 Ford Avenue, Springdale, Arkansas, wishes to participate in and be eligible for the investment tax incentives contained in Arkansas Code Annotated Section 15-4-2706D due, due to the construction of its expansion and the purchase of new equipment in Washington County, Arkansas, and whereas American Tubing Incorporated has agreed to furnish Washington County all information necessary for its participation in the tax refund program, now therefore be it resolved by the Quorum Court of Washington County, Arkansas, Article 1, that the participation of American Tubing Incorporated in the sales and use tax refunds is provided by the Consolidated Incentive Act and Arkansas Code Annotated 15-4-2706D is hereby endorsed and the Department of Finance and Administration is authorized to refund local sales taxes to American Tubing Incorporated and that this resolution shall take effect immediately. Okay. And I'd just like to, to make a motion that we pass this. I have a motion and a second. Uh, do I have any discussion? Do I have any? I'm sorry. Yes, J.P. Harbison. Well, it doesn't have to do with Lance, but I would like for us to track the amount of money that we're donating to these businesses so that we have an idea at the end of the year uh, how much tax relief we have given. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, it's a refund. I don't know if we have to go to the business to get this or if Cheryl, I don't know how that works. Anyway, you know, That's a good question. I know it's sales tax on equipment. You don't have to pay the sales tax on the equipment, correct? That's correct. So it would be just on those items that are taxable, like the building materials right. themselves, things like that. Um, but, you know, but I would like for us to start uh, tracking that because it's uh, it's something that we're doing to increase uh, jobs in the county. And I think that uh, the general public needs to know that we're doing some things to attract jobs. Thank you. Thank you, J.P. Harvison. J.P. Pond. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe this is... This is revenue that we ever have received. This would be new revenues that we're we're not gonna we're not gonna receive for a period of time in order to allow industry to grow. Right. Okay. But I'd like to know how much that is. Okay. J.P. Cochran. Yes. Yes, Mr. Eads. Do you have an estimate of how much money we're we're actually going to save the? I, I don't. Um, I know the project altogether, including the the lots that they're purchasing in the building, is going to be approximately eight million dollars. But I don't know how much that would actually be the taxable. Then obviously the lots not, but I don't know how much the building materials will be. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judge. I think uh, yes, JP Madison. Thank you, Madam Judge. I just want to be clear, and if if I may ask our attorney. This sales tax we're talking about is not strictly just the county sales tax. It is the statewide sales tax. It's well, the entire sales tax. This is it's it's Springdale's as well, um, but it's local. It's only local. I think the state sales tax is unaffected by this particular statute. Um, so they still. It's been a while since I've dealt with one of these, but as I remember, it's all local sales tax that that we are essentially. And they pay it, and we and they get refunded through DFNA. Yes, So our county treasurer or comptroller don't ever track this. I think that's correct. So we'd have to, in order to comply with J.B. Harbison's request, we'd have to ask DFNA to let us know. Yes, and I I, I think you could do that without. It could be done. I'll just put it that way. I, I don't. But we speak can't compel them to do it. We could ask, please. You could ask for fo through FOIA, and they'd have to comply that way. But I, it, it, okay. they, to, he should use a microphone, please. I'll just 
just looking at it today, actually, there's a report I can get through the DFNA that shows the total rebates on sales tax per month. And could we ask Mr. Hill if it is only the local sales tax under this statute? I believe so. I believe it okay. is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Any other questions? Any public comments? Karen, would you please call the roll? Joel Maxwell? Joe Patterson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Eckey? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. This resolution is adopted. Thank you for coming. Lance, it's always good to see you. And Thank you know you. you're always welcome to come back. I appreciate it. Thank you, Court. Thank, Thank you, you, Judge. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number eight, Rick Cochran. Thank you, Judge. Uh, this is a resolution that will authorize the judge to apply for a grant in the amount of $2,500 for the juvenile division of Circuit Court 3. Uh, Attorney Zega, would you please read the ordinance? A resolution authorizing the county judge to apply for an Arkansas Supreme Court Improvement Program grant on behalf of Circuit Court 3, Juvenile Division. Whereas the Quorum Court has determined that Circuit Court 3, Juvenile Division, meets eligibility requirements necessary to apply at for an Arkansas Supreme Court Improvement Program grant and whereas Circuit Court 3 Juvenile Division has presented the need for a family communications class and whereas said grant is for the amount of $2,500 and requires no match by the county, now therefore be it resolved by the Quorum Court of Washington County, Arkansas, Article 1, it hereby approves, I'm sorry, it hereby authorizes and approves the submission of a grant application as stated above. Thank you. I will move to pass 8.1. I have a motion to have a second. second. I have a second. Do I have any discussion? Do I have any public comment? No comment. Karen, would you call the roll, please? Joel Maxwell? Joe Patterson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Eckey? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison, Sue Madison. Yes. This resolution is adopted. Number 9.1. Mr. Cochran. Thank you, Judge. Uh, this is an ordinance that uh, it came from our meeting last night with the Planning Commission uh, to fund the our, our portion of the FEMA study, which uh, for the amount of $31,880, uh, for the public to know that this is about 4% of the total cost. FEMA is shouldering a lion's share of this. Uh, Springdale and Fable will pay fairly close to the same amount of money in some of the smaller towns. This will allow us to get a new FEMA floodplain map, which will give those folks in those areas a chance to get the flood insurance, uh, know that they're in a floodplain, uh, know that if you're purchasing some land that you might be going into a floodplain. The maps have only been updated in about 10 years ago, and they were done on a basis of a lot less technology. Uh, the technology that is being used today uh, really uh, improves the quality of the flood map. Uh, and with that, Attorney Zeka, would you please read the ordinance? An ordinance appropriating $31,880 from the general fund to the planning budget for 2015, Article 1. There is hereby appropriated the amount of $31,880 from the general fund to the county matching funds line item of the planning budget for 2015. Thank you, Attorney Ziga. I will move to pass 9.1. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? With no further comments, Karen, would you call the roll, please? Joe Maxwell? Joe Patterson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Eckey? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. This ordinance is adopted. <coughs> Excuse me. The next thing we'll go to is number 10. Mr. Cochran? Thank you, Judge. Uh, item 10 is an ordinance that will actually be funding from the circuit clerk's budget and a total amount of $20,000 to go in to provide supplies and medicine and drugs for our animal shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, Attorney Zega, would you please read 10.1? 
An ordinance reducing the circuit clerk's budget in the general fund by $20,000, appropriating the amount of $20,000 from the general fund to the animal shelter budget, and appropriating the amount of $20,000 from the circuit clerk's commission fee in fund to the circuit clerk's budget and said fund for 2015. Article 1. The following line items in the circuit clerk's budget of the general fund in the total amount of $20,000 for 2016. Well, hold on a second. There should be a reduction in, right? It looks like there are two typos in that first article. One is we're reducing the circuit clerk's budget, and we that verb is not in there. That's what I thought. And it should be 2015, right? Okay. Um, judge, there should be, uh, um, well, I'll read it as printed, and what y'all need to do, if you're inclined to do this, is move to amend it. The following line items in Article 1, the following line items in the circuit clerk's budget of the general fund in the total amount of $20,000 for 2016, postage $8,000, public records $12,000 for a total reduction of $20,000, Article 2, there is hereby appropriated the amount of $20,000 from the general fund to the following line items in the animal shelter budget for 2015. General supplies, $9,000. Janitorial supplies, $2,000. Medicine and drugs, $9,000 for a total appropriation of $20,000. Article 3, there is hereby appropriated the amount of $20,000 from the circuit clerk's commissioner fee fund to the following line items in the circuit clerk's budget for 2015. Postage, $8,000. Public records, $12,000 for a total appropriation of $20,000. Thank you, Attorney Zega. The uh, Article 1, the uh, rewording, would that be uh, best said the following light items are reduced? I would, would that uh, be may the I proper? Be yes, would you please? Uh, I would suggest the following, um, inserting the words are hereby reduced between items and in in the first line and then uh, changing 2016 to 2015. Okay. So... 10.1 with a revision would read the following line items hereby are reduced are hereby reduced by items in the circuit clerk's budget of the general fund in the total amount of 20,000 for 2015. Did I get that right? I I think it would read the following line items are hereby reduced in the circuit clerk's budget of the general fund in the total amount of $20,000 okay. for 2015. Okay. I would uh, make that as a amendment and make it a, also a motion to pass 10.1. Second. I have an amendment and a motion. Judge, you have to, I think we have to, we, we have, have to, no, I know that. we have to do those two. Okay. They have to be separate. Be separate. All right. Separately. Move to pass 10.1. Oh. Amendment first. No. We have to, we have to pass 10.1 and you then have to amend. amend. You have to amend it have to and amend then it pass okay. it. Okay. Move to amend as you have read. Thank you. Okay. I have a motion and a second to amend 10.1. Any discussion? Karen, would you call the roll? Joel Maxwell, Joe Patterson. This is the amendment, yes, sir. Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Ussery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Ecke? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison, Sue Madison. Yes. And now a motion to move to pass the amended 10.1. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? J.P. Madison. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to know from what budget in the circuit clerk's office did this money come, and how does it happen that they just have an extra $20,000 they can give away? Mr. S would you come forward, please? <laughs> Thank you very much, Kyle. Hi. Um, whenever we have judicial foreclosures and we have to sell property per court order, there is a fee called the commissioner's fee that goes by um, legislation into <clears throat> into an account called the commissioner fee fund 
and that is used to offset administrative expenses and expenses of the circuit clerk's office. That money is um, used to do things in the circuit clerk's office, projects or new equipment, things like that, to kind of offset the strain on the general budget. Okay, so it's a, it's, it's a commission on the sale that it's you a, conduct? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's a tenth okay. of a percent of the selling price of the foreclosure sale. Okay, and annually, how much does that run? It kind of depends on how many judicial foreclosures we have. We can't project that. Well, for this year? Uh, well, since, since the legislation passed, uh, there's been a total accumulation of about $30,000. So over, over about a two-year period, uh, about $30,000. But the foreclosures have slowed down tremendously. And does this court appropriate those monies annually, or they don't have to be appropriated for some reason? If, if I need to utilize the funds in that, I have to come to the quorum court for permission to use those funds. So if you had decided that you wanted to spend this $20,000 on uh, new laptops for some of your staff, you would have had to come to us with an ordinance? Yes, ma'am. Are you in need of things for your office like new laptops that you're foregoing? Not currently. Okay. So this is truly found money lying around in a sense. Well, th this is... Th like, you know, coins in the sofa, so to speak. This, this is money to help the county. Uh, my off, my, the circuit Well, I would hope that every dollar you ever have is for the oh, absolutely. benefit of the county. Absolutely. My, uh, the circuit clerk's office has a history of of being able to help out the county on several different occasions. Well, my point is your needs are met. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so any more money you take into this fund this year, you won't need either. I, not that I know of at this point, unless there's an emergency that comes up, but if okay. something comes up where we there is a need, I still have to come before the court and ask for that appropriation. Will this amount clean that fund out? No, ma'am. How much is the balance? Uh, a little over $30,000. Okay. Okay. Very good. Good information. Thank you, Madam Judge. J.P. Yes. Uh Kyle Sylvester, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the knight in white, shining armor. I don't know where your steed is, but you've come to the rescue <laughs> of our shelter, and they were in need. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. J.P. Bowman. Kyle, best I remember, uh, you said you're going to have to have some new staff people. You're going to have to add several people next year. Uh, my my budget is looking for three new staff members. It's for what? I'm sorry. You're you're asking for going to be asking for what? Three new staff members. Three new staff members. Okay. Yes, Will they re be requiring some additional equipment? At this point, no. We, ha we have stations where they'll be able to work, and those are already outfitted with computers and scanners and the things that they need to do their job. Okay. Well, Kyle, I, you know, I really appreciate your generosity. As a matter of fact, guys, I hope that uh, Kyle's uh, gesture here can be reflected throughout the courthouse because I think this kind of thing of everybody helping each other is really a very positive outreach. Guys, I guess one, the one comment I've got about this thing is Angela made a comment at our last meeting that she's going to be able to make it through the year. And I think that we really need to give Angela a chance to do exactly what she said. And so there's a hand went up back there. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe we ought to have Angela come to the mic here and, and uh, talk about that. But Kyle, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Kyle. <clears throat> When I said I would be able to make it through the remainder of the year, that was with the assumption that this would pass. I was, I, that money that I need to get through the rest of the year is included in this ordinance. Without this ordinance, I do fall short. So I just wanted to clear that up for everybody. I need this extra 20000 to finish out. Because if you remember, I came back and originally asked for 35000 
$5,000 has been donated graciously through the Animal League. So we've reduced that down. This is the remaining amount. So this money I do need <clears throat> in order to continue services as they have been through the remainder of the year. Okay, thank you. Yes, J.P. Ecke. Angela, would you do me a favor and make it clear to everyone out there that the $44,000 that was taken out or the $44,000 that grounds used to designate to the animal shelter was not an error on the court's part that we did not miscalculate or misappropriate that 44000 and we did not set an ordinance or legislate that the grounds do that. Because I've received um, emails still after I felt the success of, of your meeting, and I was very happy in responding to everybody. It was still stated that you all made the error of taking this out of their budget, and you all are the ones that didn't appropriate this properly in the budget, and why didn't you all see it coming? And I'm going, I don't think anybody did. So would you just state what happened that caused this to begin with, and then we'll be done with it? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Judge. Thank you. When, um, at, last year, after the budget was finalized, there was some discussion as to whether or not buildings and grounds would be able to carry the um, janitorial supplies for the animal shelter as they had done in the past. And it was decided at that point that they could not and that I would need to be responsible, and I agree with that statement. The shelter should be responsible for its own. Although the budget was finalized, there was no way at that point to come back and ask for it in the 2006. 16, or excuse me, 2015 budget. So going forward in the 2016 budget, I will be requesting that, but it, it, that was not something that was asked of the court. I did not include that in my budget request for 2015 because I was not, I was under the impression that it would still be paid out of buildings and grounds. So does that answer? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Angela. Thank you very much. Do I have any other comments? Do, do I have a motion? And, and I have a motion and a second. No other discussion with no further comments. Karen, would you call the roll, please? Joe Maxwell? Joe Patterson? No. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? No. Rick Cochran? Yes. No, no. Robert Dennis? We can't have that. Yes. Lisa Eckie? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? No. Tom Lundstrom? No. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. It doesn't pass on the first reading, Judge. It does not pass on the first reading. No. Yeah, Mr. Cochran? Yeah, yeah, you're recognized. If I could be so kind as to ask all of you to please not shout out. Sometimes we have to just take things as they come and we have to be patient. So if you'll just be patient with everything that's going on, I would greatly appreciate it. And let's keep, have, keep our decorum here in the courtrooms. So we are in a court, and it's vitally important that we do this. But thank you guys for all being here. So let's keep the court decorum, and I appreciate you. So we need to, I guess, Ann? We need to call a special meeting uh, to have it on second reading. Judge May, uh, yeah, Steve, would you? Uh, I, I'll repeat the, uh, the the Justice Harbison's question, and uh, the question was: Do we need to have a special meeting to have it on second reading? Y'all are certainly able to do that. Um, you can also place it on second reading at the next regular meeting. Um, and uh, even though it did not pass with ten votes tonight, uh, a majority can still pass it on three readings as an appropriation ordinance. Um, so the answer is what the court's pleasure is. J.P. Pond. We can 
probably get by and still get this passed without holding a special meeting by just doing it at regular meetings, can we not? May I address yes, that? Yes, please. It, Justice Pond, you you could, but you'd have to suspend the rules at the regular at the August twentieth. I believe that's the next regular form court meeting. Yes. You'd have to suspend the rules and pass and agree to by two thirds. Um, don't know that that would happen given the no votes tonight, um, or you'd have to do it at the potentially have to get it read again at uh, the regular quorum court meeting. Uh, and if there wasn't support to suspend the rules and place it on third reading that night, then uh, place it on uh, the next special quorum court agenda, which I believe is September 10th. 10th, that's correct. So those are um, those can, are the options. Can the can the animal shelter hold out without that those monies between now and the time we'd finally get it squeezed through? Um, that's a question better directed to Director Ledgerwood, I believe. And I'll be honest with you, um, JP Pond, I can't accurately answer that question everything depends on the amount of animals that come into the building okay. can i wait until september yes provided i limit the intakes that come into the building okay so we're back to ms harbison's suggestion thank you very mm -hmm. much yes jp harbison To do this on second reading, we would have to have a two-thirds vote, and that means that some people that voted no for the money would have to, would be willing to vote yes so that we can move this on, and I don't know if that's possible or not. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to make a motion, I guess, that we put it on second reading tonight, and or first reading, it would be yes. second reading, and... Uh, We'll see if we have the 10 votes to then vote on it. I have a motion and a second to place this on the second reading. Is this? It's a two thirds vote. It has to be a two thirds. Okay. Spend the rules and read title only. Steve, would you read the? Well, actually, we have to have a have vote before time we do. For me to yeah. call roll. Okay, Karen, call the roll. Joe Maxwell, Joe Patterson. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill I'm sorry, we're voting to suspend the rules. Suspend the rules in place. Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? No. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Eckey? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? No. Tom Lundstrom? No. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. And then motion failed, so that's it. We will have public comments at the end of the meeting because right now we don't have public comments on this particular issue. Because, but we will have public comments at the end of the meeting. I'm just going to talk to the newspaper. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Okay. Judge. I'm just, Mr. Yes, Judge, do we need to uh, make a motion to bring it to the full quorum court for our second reading, or will it just automatically go onto that agenda? Steve? The judge will put it, I, I, I'm assuming, the judge will put it on okay. the agenda. I can for, I'm, ask, the I'm agenda. asking you yes, to, okay? Yes. Thank you. I will put it on the agenda. Number 11. All right. Rick? Number 11 is a $7,500 grant amount we're, we're anticipating revenue for the dhs jdai i don't remember what jdi ai stands for can you help me it's juvenile something there we go juvenile detention alternative initiative uh this is a, a grant that we are um, fund well we're not funding we're anticipating additional revenue uh mr zega would you please read the ordinance an ordinance anticipating additional revenue of $7,500 in the Law Enforcement Grant Fund and appropriating $7,500 from the Law Enforcement Grant Fund to the DHS-JDAI grant budget 
for 2015. Article 1, there is hereby anticipated additional revenue of $7,500 in the federal grant revenue line item of the law enforcement grant fund for 2015. Article 2, there is hereby appropriated the amount of $7,500 from the law enforcement grant fund to the following line items in the DHS JDAI grant budget for 2015. Travel, $500. Common carrier, $3,000. Meals and lodging, $4,000. Total appropriation, $7,500. Do we have someone who wishes to speak to this? Thank you. This grant is for juvenile court, Judge Zimmerman, and they will be taking four people to attend out of state JDAI conference, and then $1,000 will be used for in state meetings. What kind of conference, what, what do they study or talk about? That would be a Norma Frisbee question. It's a national conference. That, um, it's held every year at different locations throughout the states. Um, it just provides a lot of information for programs that we can provide here in the county for our youth and our families to prevent them from going into detention. Our main goal is to provide diversion programs, alternatives, anything, and that's where we get our information from. Okay, thank you. I move to pass 11.1. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? With no further comments, Karen, would you call the roll, please? Joe Maxwell? Joe Patterson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Ecke? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. This ordinance is adopted. Number 13, I'm mean, sorry, number 12. 12. 12, yes. Thank you, Judge. 12.1 uh, is an ordinance that will recognize revenue in amount of $31,167 in our JDC grant fund and appropriate to various line items. Uh, Mr. Zega, would you please read 12.1? An ordinance recognizing additional revenues of $31,167 in the JDC grant fund and appropriating $31,167 from the JDC grant fund to the Juvenile Detention Center Grant and Aid 2015-2016 budget for 2015. Article 1, there is hereby recognized additional revenue of $31,167 in the state grants revenue line item of the JDC grant fund for 2015. Article 2, there is hereby appropriated the amount of $31,167 from the JDC grant fund to the following line items in the JDC GIA 2015-16 budget for 2015. General supplies, $1,932. Small equipment, $6,618. Janitorial supplies, $1,500. Medicine and drugs, $1,000. Food, $1,500. Clothing and uniforms, $2,500. Computer and IT equipment, $3,882. Detainee supplies, $4,000. Other professional services, $300. Postage, $2,000. Dues and memberships, $1,435. Meals and lodging, $1,000. Training education, $3,500 for a total appropriation of $31,167. Thank you, Mr. Zaga. Uh, Jeannie Mack, do you want to talk about this? Tell us what good things you're going to do with all these new funds. Uh, the GIA, or grant in aid, is a, a grant that we've received from the Department of Finance and Admin for, oh my gosh, since I've been there, mm -hmm. early 1990s. Um, the line items that we use, like the food, say, I'll pick that one, we use that for our diversion programs to feed the kids in the diversion programs that mm -hmm. I participate in, the JDC participates in. Um, the IT equipment would be for the classroom because we also uh, supplement our classroom. So we'll be getting like Chromebooks this year. We're going to go to virtual education like um, Fayetteville is so these kids can stay with school. So any yeah. line item you want to ask me about, I'll be happy to address. But it's just something that state gives all of the JDCs. It's based on a formula of how many beds the JDC has. Mm -hmm. So ours is always 31167. You can see that's what we've always received. So right. It's gone down over the years, but that 
particular amount has remained pretty much the same, I think, the last 10 years. All right. Thank you. I yep. move to pass 12.1. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Karen, would you call the roll? Gerald Maxwell, Joe Patterson, yes. Butch Pond, yes. Bill Essery, yes. Daniel Balls, yes. Harvey Bowman, yes. Rick Cochran, yes. Robert Dennis, yes. Lisa Ecke, yes. Ann Harbison, yes. Sharon Lloyd, yes. Tom Lundstrom, yes. Eva Madison, Sue Madison. Yes. This ordinance is adopted. Number 13, Mr. Cochran. Well, thank you, Judge. Uh, item 13.1 is an ordinance that we need to enact to augment our uh, whole Washington County ambulance services. Now that we've added three more cities, uh, we need to update them into the full. This will uh, kind of be a follow-on from the other financing that we've offered to Central EMS. Um, Mr. Zegger, would you like to read 13.1, please? Um, I will. Before I do that, Justice Cochran, if I could ask for a bit of indulgence to explain this, may I? Yes, judge? please. please. Um, folks, the uh, contract that you have as 13.2 that's attached to this mm -hmm. uh, is essentially the exact same contract. If you remember, we were doing ambulance uh, expanding into the northern 15 percent or so of the county mm -hmm. uh, in two phases, essentially. One was hiring the personnel. Um, the paramedics and the other folks that we needed to hire and train and the other would be eventually buying the truck and the equipment and all of that stuff. Well, I drew the contract between the uh, Regional Ambulance Authority, uh, the county and the two cities that are affected, or three cities rather, Johnson, Elm Springs and Tawnytown. And the Johnson and, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the Johnson and Elm Springs city attorneys got, called me back and said, we want in the contract, which wasn't in there originally, a guarantee that we're going to be, participate in the Washington County Regional Ambulance Authority. And we had talked all about that in the broader discussions, but I didn't put it in the paper in, the, uh, in writing in the contract. So this is that version, and I apologize to them and to y'all for having to do this again, but that's all that's in this that's different from the last time. So having said that, an ordinance approving a revised interlocal agreement for financing ambulance services agreement between Washington County, Arkansas County, the Washington County Regional Ambulance Authority, WCRAA, and the cities of Elm Springs, Tawnytown, and Johnson cities. Whereas Arkansas Code Annotated Section 1414.910, and 14266.102 authorize cities and counties to enter into contracts to cooperate or join with each other to provide emergency and non-emergency medical services and to specify the responsibilities of all parties and whereas the city of Springdale, which had previously provided ambulance coverage to the cities of Elm Springs, Tawnytown, and the northern half of the city of Johnson and the unincorporated areas of the northern of northern Washington County will cease to provide such coverage on December 31st, 2015 and whereas providing ambulance covers, coverage to, air, to the areas no longer covered served by the city of Springdale will require the purchase of an additional ambulance with related equipment and the training and employment of additional personnel and whereas all parties acknowledge that the continued provision of ambulance service is crucial for the continued health and safety of the residents of the named cities and the county and whereas the cities of Elm Springs and Tawnytown do not currently participate in WCRAA as established in an interlocal agreement in 2008 but anticipate participation beginning in 2016 and whereas all parties acknowledge that the continuing operation of WCRAA will require close and continued cooperation of all parties and whereas the quorum court adopted ordinance number 2015-55 in July of 2015 approving an interlocal agreement in this matter that has since been revised at the request of the cities of Elm Springs and Johnson now therefore be ordained by the quorum court of Washington County, Arkansas, Article 1 that the said revised interlocal agreement is approved and the county judge is authorized to sign such. Thank you, Attorney Joe. I move to pass 13.1. I have. Now, th this has to be placed on three readings. Does That's it correct, Judge. This is mm -hmm. the first reading, so we're going to okay. need to suspend the rules. All right, I move to suspend the rules and place on the second reading by title only. I have a motion and a second to suspend rules. Uh, any discussion? Karen, would you call the roll, please? Joe Maxwell, Joe Patterson, yes. Butch Pond, yes. Bill Essery, yes. 
Daniel Balls. Yes. Harvey Bowman. Yes. Rick Cochran. Yes. Robert Dennis. Yes. Lisa Ecke. Yes. Ann Harbison. Yes. Sharon Lloyd. Yes. Tom Lundstrom. Yes. Eva Madison. Sue Madison. Yes. Move to place on the third reading. Oh, I have to Just read it first. Oh, sorry. That's okay. My time okay. only. An ordinance approving a revised interlocal agreement for financing ambulance services agreement between Washington County, Arkansas County, the Washington County Regional Ambulance Authority, WCRAA, and the cities of Elm Springs, Tawnytown, and Johnson cities. Okay. Move to suspend the rules. Place on the third reading by title only. I have a, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Harry, would you call the roll? Joel Maxwell, <laughs> Joe Patterson. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Ecke? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. An ordinance approving a revised interlocal agreement for financing ambulance services agreement between Washington County, Arkansas County, the Washington County Regional Ambulance Authority, WCRAA, and the cities of Elm Springs, Tawnytown, and Johnson cities. Move to pass 13.1. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any public comments? Karen, would you call the roll, please? Joe Maxwell? Joe Patterson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Bill Essery? Yes. Daniel Balls? Yes. Harvey Bowman? Yes. Rick Cochran? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Lisa Ecke? Yes. Ann Harbison? Yes. Sharon Lloyd? Yes. Tom Lundstrom? Yes. Eva Madison? Sue Madison? Yes. This ordinance is adopted. Now that's with our changes and everything is up to date and our ambulance service is in effect. Uh, the next thing we have on the agenda is an update on the 2016 budget procedures. Uh, I will be chairing these meetings and will be making suggestions to the budget process, but the process and the product belongs to the quorum court. I'll be making suggestions, but what the outcome of this belongs to you folks, so it's up to y'all. The Comptroller has sent out budget forms to all of the elected officials and the departments to begin developing their de budgets for 2016. So these have gone out to all of the departments to get these ready. Once these are returned, they will be compiled into one document that will include the revenue summary. This document will be distributed at the next special quorum court meeting that I have scheduled for September the 10th. So we're trying to get all of these ready. We're meeting with offices now. At the September 10th meeting, County Treasurer Bobby Hill will be presenting the breakdown for the preliminary revenue projects for 2016. And it's not a benefit, to, it's just not a benefit to start talking about the uh, substance items until this is known. So I don't want to waste a lot of time until we know what the revenue is going to be. So our first meeting will be September the 10th. I am also scheduling a special quorum court meeting on September the 24th. This will, uh, will only consist of the 2016 budget items. There will be nothing else on this except strictly budgets. And the Washington County Salary Consultant Blair Johansson will be giving, will be giving his salary presentations at this meeting. So I just wanted to let you guys know tonight that this is the procedure we will be doing. Uh, we will try to provide you as much information as we possibly can. If there's something you need that you need to ask for, uh, please get with Mr. Butler, get with Cheryl. We'll try to provide anything we can to make things a little bit easier for you. But that's going to be the procedure of getting started on this budget. Madam that, Judge, just yes. to clarify, it's at 530? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And uh, so... Uh, but like I say, the next quorum court meeting will be scheduled for Thursday, September the 10th. We're going to be seeing each other a lot on Thursdays. So just hang on, because here we go. And uh, so the next thing we have, uh, anything we have, if, do you have any questions on this? Yes, J.P. Madison. Thank you, Madam Judge. I, I have a request. As these um, documents and bits of information are coming in from all the various departments and elected <coughs> officials, could we please have some kind of um, notes for the departments that have these special funds like the circuit clerk's office had? I mean, they're sort of a, a puzzle to me. I've known for years, of course, that there's automation funds, that the treasurer's office collects a fee, that 
some of those kinds of things, but I didn't really know about this commissioner's fee until tonight. So if we could be made aware of all the various departments that have other special forms of revenue that we may have been appropriating without fully being aware, I'd just like to know which ones have those and what they are. You're recognized, Steve. Help me here. Uh, well, may I engage Justice Madison? Yes, Colin? please. Uh, it seems to me that um, Treasurer Roger Haney used to put a PowerPoint on about that exact, um, those exact kind of issues, and I don't know if uh, Bobby's, Bobby's still has access to that or not, but he used to talk, Roger used to talk to us about each uh, non-general, like that didn't come straight out of taxes, in other words, either the millage or the sales tax. Alternative revenue sources might be a way to say that. That's good. That's a good way to phrase it, alternative revenue sources. But Roger used to put on a PowerPoint that explained, um, now, you know, that was 12, 13 years ago, and some things may have changed in the legislation, but uh, we used to get talk to, we used to understand that in those sorts of terms that you're asking yeah. for. So uh, I may well, be, I'll ask Bobby okay. about that. Well, let me just, since J.P. Eckie has brought this up previously. This little screen right here is worthless for me to see anything on. I mean, maybe I've got aging eyesight, but and this one is breaks my neck to try to look at. So if we're going to have a meaningful PowerPoint, it's either going to have to be bigger or something on my laptop or some way for me to actually see it because that is not working. No, that hadn't been on tonight. <laughs> well, no, I know not tonight, but I think last night. So I haven't missed anything tonight. That's good. But I have to you a little bit. But last night, I think it, it also didn't function very well. But I know when we had the report on the um, county bridge investigation, however many odd numbers of pages there were, it was worthless to me. I will see what Mr. Adams can provide for us. if if. if if they can do a PowerPoint. I won't even tell you that because I don't do PowerPoints. But now Cheryl might be able to. But they need and, to be able and, and, and for us to we'll, see them. We'll get Mr. Adams to help us if okay. we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> thank but you. thank you. I just think it would be good for us to know about all these other little pots of money or perhaps big pots of money that the county has. Yeah. Alternative revenue sources. Steve will Very work good. With Bobby on that. Thank you, Very good. Madam Judge. Also, at the beginning of the finance year in January, I asked also for grant funds. And I know that it's not always you get the grant, but it helps to know what grant funds are coming in and how much is coming in or what is out there or what is proposed. Because you get all of this money and you don't know where it's coming from. And I know it's, it's, it's hard because they're like projections. You just never know. But if I could ha we could have those in that. Do, now, I, mean, I, I cannot give you a real good answer here, and Renee may be able to help me. I'm not sure we always know when the grants are there because you apply for those grants and you go out there. So I don't think you, I can say well, January 1 we can give you a, a list of about, all grants. How about those that we have? Renee, you know, can we, you work we on have that? these grants. I have a spreadsheet I've been providing. With big type so I can see it. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Next to Kyle Sylvester, you're the hero of the night. Uh, yes. Thank you, Madam Judge. If I could follow up on that, uh, from past experience, it's good for us to know that we've had a grant that may not be continuing, and therefore we don't want to continue to fund whatever it was that grant's purpose might have been. Many years ago, the Extension Service had a grant for the Master Gardeners. It was not, not a lot of money. It was $15,000. But it showed up in the next year's budget, and we knew that money wasn't going to be there, and we shouldn't replace it. You know, the grant was a one-year grant. So some of these grants are one-time only That's or right. a short duration, and we don't need for them to become an ongoing part of a budget. So for that reason, I think it's really important what J.P. Eggie has asked for, that we know which funds have come in from grants that we have to look at as not necessarily continuing or as people in Louisiana used to call it, lanyap, something pleasant that's unexpected that I'm going is to ask temporary. Renee to come up. She seems to have something she needs to explain. <clears throat> Just to address 
Ms. Madison's comments, each grant has its own budget. So, for example, the drug court grant, the SAMHSA grant that we have, it's not a part of Judge Beaumont's budget that she brings forward. It has its own separate delineation. So if the grant goes away, the entire budget goes away. Anything that was paid for out of the grant, if there's no budget there, then everything that was paid for out of the grant is gone. Well, where, where does it come to us? How do we know that? Well, it comes to you each year whenever the grants are applied for and received, there's an appropriation ordinance. So grants are never part of a budget? They're never part of a general budget, never. Well, then things have changed a little. It's all, it, they're all separate budgets, and each one of them has a separate ordinance that comes before you. Except for at the beginning of the year, we do carryover grants, and that's where we received an award in 15, and it's good through middle of 16 or something. And then so Cheryl puts that all in a housekeeping ordinance. Still, they're in their own budgets. They're never part of a general fund. They're never part of a budget, a general department budget. So if the Extension Service has a grant that started in November and it continues till April, it wouldn't be part of the Extension Service budget? That's right. No. Okay, that's good information. I wanted to stay that way then. Cheryl may have a comment here. Further questions? Okay, thank, thank you, you Madam Chair. If you will look at Report um, 6.3, I always just sort of mention County General because it's just big and y'all can look at the rest mm -hmm. of them. But if you look at that and you'll go down to the ones, the funds 1900, you will see that those are all the grant funds. It has them broken down by departments. It shows their budgets. It shows the expenditures. It shows the percent used just like it does the other funds. So you get that information every month. Um, and then Bobby also in his report will you can probably look back and see where he shows the actual cash balance, what's come in, what's been spent as well. So you have that information. You get, you get it every month. And it's, it's not part of the general. It's, and um, Sue is right. The grants used to be in county general. I agree with her. Um, it, it's not a good place to put the grants because it balloons your, your general fund. It looks like you've got all this money, but then those grants go away. So... Um, but you do have all that information. If you need more, let us know. But it pretty much tells you everything, I think. Mm -hmm. This is one reason I wanted, hang on just a minute, J.P. Cox. I wanted to have this presentation tonight. I wanted things of this nature that could be brought out. If people had questions, they had comments, or they have things that they need to call someone and get their information so they know what they're doing. And I think it's a good idea to kind of, Lay it out there and let everybody see what's going on and ask questions if they knew to. That's the reason I wanted to do this. J.P. Cochran. Yes, just, just one more thing to, to note. If you look at item 11 and item 12 on our agenda and the titles of these, it'll tell you a difference in the types of appropriations that we do. One, on 11, it's anticipating additional revenue for a grant, meaning we expect 7500 but it's not guaranteed. On 12, it's an ordinance recognizing additional mm -hmm. revenue of 31167. That's hard cash in the bank. So there is a difference when you look at these ordinances as we move through them through the year. Uh, that's how you know that if this is money that we know we're going to get because we've got it or that we have applied for that amount and we may or may not get the full amount. Thank, Thank you, you, Judge. Thank you, Chippy Cochran. Are grants usually just a year? No, no, no. no. They can be I'm sorry, so any, any length of time, you know. Those, okay. Yeah. Just like our big water project that we had. I don't know how many years that lasted. It Each lasted. grant varies. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, so. Uh, any other Thank comments? You. Any other questions? J.P. Dennis. I'd like to make a comment because I came to the meeting with the department managers, or department heads, excuse me, and uh, didn't make it then, but I'd like to make it now if I could. I want the department heads to know that I trust them completely. I think they know more about their departments than I will ever know. And so what I want to see on the budget that they propose to us is what they have to have to operate their departments. And then anything that's separate is a not a wish list, but something different or capital improvements or things like that. There should be just a there should be a column where we never touch it because 
they know this is the actual cost. And so if you could separate those actual costs from the variables, it would certainly be nice to know because I don't want to touch anything that they say, this is what we have to have in order to operate. And so sometimes there's a difference in budgets, uh, you know, the have to's and then the wants. And I'd like to see something like that, or at least notes that say, uh, I'm anticipating that we'll have a capital, have to spend money on buying uh, sheriffs back there, police cars, something, you know, anything that's different. But if it's just basic everyday costs that they have year after year after year, I expect them to have it in there and then they know it and we don't. So, or at least I don't. And so that, I just want to express my confidence in the department heads that we have. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Vijay Dennis. I just want to thank all of you tonight for allowing us to kind of get this started and get it off a of high center. I just think it's important that we all know this. And again, I want to thank each and everyone. Like I say, we're going to get, become very friendly because we're going to start seeing each other a lot here for about the next three months. Do I have any citizens' comments for this evening? Please identify yourself, Mike. <laughs> Uh, my name is Mike Emery, of course, a citizen in Washington County and a uh, former staff member of the animal shelter. So I'll keep it brief, just a couple quick notes. So with all due respect to everybody, the results of the vote on item 10 are shameful. The last meeting in a heated debate was a proposal to move funds from other departments without their prior knowledge to the shelter. That was rightfully denied because you don't take money from other departments without at least speaking with them first. Tonight we had an example, a fine example of teamwork by the city, or the, excuse me, the circuit clerk's office on assisting the shelter without duress to the circuit clerk budget. It's irresponsible to deny these funds transfers. It is a disservice to the citizens and the animals of Washington County. I urge the members of this court who voted no, put aside their petty political differences and reconsider this funding. Citizens of Washington County deserve better. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else want to make a comment? I would like to make a very, very short comment here. I would like to apologize for anyone that does not understand when we take public comments. We always do this at the end. Now, we may change this when time goes by, and I'm very, very sorry that people got upset when we were trying to vote on this, but we have a procedure and we have a policy we have to follow. And again, I want to apologize. It's according to procedure and policy, so please understand and be patient because there's nothing I can do about that. So I just want you all to know. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Right. Yes. Uh, guys, I've been pretty persistent in this comment, but you know, doggone it, we have a checkbook that we have to balance. And, and, this is not something against the animal shelter. It's not trying to put any hurt on anybody at all. But we have got to try to keep these costs under control. And, you know, there was a misunderstanding between Angela and I because I thought when she told us that she's going to be okay, she meant she's going to be okay. But, you know, guys, we've got to continue to try to work on this situation and bring this thing back into balance. 12.4 million the last five years and 4.5 million last year in excess of what we took in in tax revenue will not continue to work. We've got to do something to bring these costs under control. And it's encouraging to see the increasing numbers out here, but they're not, they're not catching up. We're still not a, a dollar for dollar on income versus expenditures. Somehow we must try to get there. I, I ask for your indulgence, your patience. We're going to have some disagreements. But it, this is difficult for us, too. It's very difficult to be up here on this seat and, and see disappointed faces out here. But doggone it, we're disappointed, too. We've Thank got you, to, Harvey. We've got to figure it out. J.P. Ecke. I'm trying to say this with wisdom. And the way I see it, 
is that Mr. Sylvester offered a portion of his bu uh, budget to the animal shelter, and that is an inner-working community trying to do the best thing with what we have. Number one, the way I see it, it's not going to cost the county any more money because those monies are already there. So it's not going to come out of county general. It's just moving like a line item transfer. You have the money from here to here, and it doesn't cost us anything. We've done that several times since January. It doesn't cost the county any more money. Therefore, we move to appropriate it or to move to vote for this ordinance because it doesn't cost the county any money. It doesn't cost the county any money. And I would like for us to reconsider that, that it's not going to cost us any more. It's already there. It's just being moved over. And uh, if Mr. Sylvester wants to give that to the other department so that way that department doesn't sink and it, he's putting a hand out, then who are we to say, no, you can't let them drown? I think we need to stop and realize it's not going to cost us any money. Thank you, J.P. Eckie. Thank you. J.P. Ossery. You know, we're thinking, we're thanking Kyle, and we do appreciate what you did, Kyle, but really the people in Little Rock are the ones who did this because they're the ones, and I don't think most people realize where that money actually came from, but that money was whenever they would auction, auction property as explained to me today on the courthouse steps, that the the fee for that, the collector's fee, which is 2%? The commissioner's fee, you mean? Yeah, the commissioner's fee. It, it's, a, it's a certain percentage of that, and in the past the commissioners got that. But whenever they started repossessing property in 08, I guess it was, in 09, and, and the commissioners started making a whole lot of money, the people in Little Rock passed an ordinance and said, you can't do that. And so where they didn't do that is start going into this fund. And that's where that money came from, is from those commissioner fees. And so that money's been sitting there unused, and now it's time for us to balance the budget and use that to keep from having to increase. And I think that if we're all aware of that, that may change the way that we feel about using this money because it's it's there to be used, and this is the time to use it. So. Uh, you know, I see no reason why we shouldn't. Thank you very much. Thank you, J.P. Oh, sorry. Madam Judge, is it possible to have another vote on this before we adjourn? No, we'll have to do it at the next meeting. It will. Yes. Okay, I, I, thank but you. thank you anyway. Yes. Guys, Kyle has told us that he's going to be having to add staff next year. In all likelihood, Kyle's going to wind up having to have some more equipment. And even though it's not going to cost us anything today, next year Kyle will come in here and tell us he's got to have more money for equipment and, and salaries and so forth. And so I understand the situation. And, and guys, look, if it gets down to the point that we absolutely have to do something down at the animal shelter, I'm going to vote yes. But all I'm saying is please do the absolute best you can to make this budget stretch. If it absolutely will not happen, then come back, and I'm going to give you a yes vote. But I want to see all of our departments doing everything possible to try to bring this cost thing under control. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you.